Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to restore my kids' swing set. It's a bit old, and it's a hand-me-down from years past, but they love this thing, and they play on it all day long. It's not in terrible shape. It just needs a bit of sanding, some cleaning, a bit of stain, and certain spots need to be reinforced with some extra wood. So stay tuned. So I got started with my sander. I sanded down all the bare wood that I could get access to. You definitely don't need a sander. It depends on the condition of your swing set. Mine's in pretty good shape. It just needs a bit of roughing up so I can get the stain in. You can use a pressure washer here or even just a garden hose and a brush with some soapy water. So this swing set has the rock climbing little steps here that obviously you got to remove so you can get to the wood behind. So that's all I'm doing here. Just screw them off and if you need to replace any hardware, you could probably just pick up stuff at Home Depot. Luckily my hardware was in good shape. If you are going to use a sander like me, just grab a nice low grit sandpaper, nothing crazy. You don't want to eat away at the wood too much. All you really want to do is just remove the splinters and any loose material, any dirt and mildew buildup. And as always, make sure to wear your respirator. You never know what's in that wood that you're sanding down. This is cedar, but who knows what, what kind of stain is in it. And also any pressure treated wood, you definitely want to wear a respirator. Now this plank was loose, so I'm going to have to replace the screws because they were rotted out. And also, I've noticed that when the kids swing, this thing flexes and actually lifts up out of the ground. So I'm planning to add some 2x4s to really reinforce the A-frame section of the swing. You'll see later. Now just give it a quick bath, a light little washing to wash away dirt, dust, any loose debris right before staining. Now if you chose not to sand and you wanted to pressure wash this instead, this would be the time to do it. Or if you're using a brush and some dish soap, go ahead and do that now too. That'll work just as easily if the wood is in good shape like mentioned before. At this point, let's go ahead and reinforce the A-frame like I mentioned before. Here I'm just measuring out the total length I'm going to need and I'm using pressure treated 2x4s I had laying around. So I think the total length was around 92 inches for each side. I'm going to go ahead and cut four of these things to install later. Now this isn't the best setup for cutting. I really should have these on saw horses or a work table or something. So I just cut one side, flip it over, and then cut the other side. Again, this doesn't have to be exact, but just close enough. So obviously I forgot to move the 2x4 before digging the hole in the ground. That's my mistake. But just go ahead and dig a few inches, embed the 2x4 in the ground. Nothing crazy, just get a nice firm seating, and then go ahead and screw it in place. I think I used about six screws in total, two in top, two in the middle, and then two down at the bottom. And then go ahead and do it on the other side as well. Same process. And then again, two more times. That way, this will be totally secure and no more flexing when it's all said and done. Now, one lesson I learned was using screws on this side, because the kids can climb up top there and be on the other side of these 2x4s, you don't want to use too long of screws, otherwise you're going to have some sharp edges on the inside. Just be mindful of that. So after I went ahead and reinforced everything and replaced all the wood I needed to replace, luckily it wasn't very much, I moved on to staining. Now here you have a lot of different options. Not only for the application, whether it's spray, brush, whatever, but also the products that you use. I'm going to leave a link to what I use down below if you're interested. And speaking of links, if you're enjoying the video or if you're getting something out of this, I'd really appreciate if you hit the subscribe and the like button. It really helps me create more content like this and also gives me some feedback if I'm doing something right. I appreciate it. Thank you. So back to the staining. I'm just using a cheap chip brush. You could pick one of these up at Home Depot for dirt cheap. Nothing crazy. I'm trying to do this on a budget as much as possible. Anyway. Go ahead and just do some nice even strokes. Just get it on there nice and thick. You don't want to drip it on and try to wipe off any excess if you get too much. But just make your way around. Nothing to it. Now luckily, I haven't gained too much weight. and I can still fit up here to do these intersections. It was a little tight. I was up there for a while. I'll spare you the rest of the footage, but after a while my knees started to hurt. And in hindsight, I really would probably do this with a sprayer next time. Even though it is a small swing set, a sprayer would go so much faster. So if you have access to one, definitely use it. After the staining, I went ahead and cleaned up these rock steps. 
I'm just using a wet rag to wipe it down. They're really just faded. They're not in terrible condition. If yours are in really rough shape and you need something heavier duty, I'd recommend maybe acetone or some type of paint stripper to really clean them up and get them down to bare plastic. Now for the spray paint, I just use a nice high performance enamel. This I think is safety yellow. I'm not sure what the blue is called, but really any high performance enamel you get at the big box store will work here. Just give it a couple of coats and make sure to get all the areas and then just reinstall them. And also replace any screws or bolts that are missing or damaged. And that's it. So a little time, a little elbow grease, and a very, very low budget, anybody can do this. I think it cost me $40 in total. The most expensive thing was the stain. It is worth noting that I didn't need to do anything to the swings or the slide. So if you do need to replace yours, obviously that's gonna add to your cost. But even with that, it's still a lot cheaper than buying a brand new one. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe and the thumbs up button. It really helps me create more content like this. Anyways, take care and see you next time.